हरे कृष्णा हनुमत मिश्र महाराज हम्बल थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग वंस अगेन फॉर द मॉन्स पॉडकास्ट well it's it's an honor for us and very very stimulating to be here in the in the monks podcast <laughs> that's why it is incredibly stimulating and memorable for me to have your association so uh. in the last podcast we had discussed some we had exceeded the topic for this discussion we sowed the seeds we thought we could discuss about uh, how bhakti sadan sri thakur's he some of his thoughts correlated with some of carl jung's and you were said you are working in that area so could we discuss that today yeah yeah we of course we sent you some uh, powerpoint images there but we can look at them later maybe um but uh, it, it's still the, the the same process the same you know focus that we've been doing uh you know the we we you know basically we're we're confronted with the situation i think everybody probably most of our audience is you know has some kind of experience with with uh deriving nutrition nutrition from the bhakti vedanta you know library and from this movement this culture you know gaudiya vaishnava chaitanya vaishnava and so once you get a little nutrition and energy then of course probably says those who have life preach Yeah, you want to help other people. This is our nature: is to be, is to be generous, you know, with others. So mm-hmm. if we got something nice, some education, and it's so natural. And then we we've taken that little citation from the introduction to the uh, Bhagavatam, the life of Lord Chaitanya. And Prabhu says that Lord Chaitanya required every ber- every person to do their you know, submit their quota, contribute their quota daily to the preaching movement, the Sankirtan. Oh, movement. okay. Yeah. But of course, some of us are Hanuman, and some of us are, are you know, are ants <laughs> bringing. You know. I mean, I tell people you can. You, it probably says a devotee by his smile, and his kirtan, and his comportment attracts so many people to Krishna consciousness. So if all you can do is smile at people, <laughs> you know, you know, okay, that's, you know, that, that's. I mean, that was true. Everybody has their capacity and stuff, and it's not to yeah, yeah. to minimize, you know, how many people become. You know, just if all you can do is smile because you feel happy, then oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, in that perspective, we of course we investigated so many ways of engaging in sankirtan, and we were trying to like be we're being pushed. Okay, you have to go out and distribute books on the street like this and that and stuff, and you know, or whatever you know. And everybody tries different things, but Prabhupada says every salesman has his own technique. Mm. Uh, every salesman has his own technique. And so you you try. You see different people what they're doing. Well, I can do that, you know. And so I remember different people. I picked up a lot of stuff from other people, you know. And so finally, okay, I went through Vastu at the university. I was about to shoot Damana Maharaj. We were doing, uh, you know, with chemists and Nobel laureates and you know, and evolution. Mm. And finally, what came around to in many ways because of my own background was in the psychology. And so then we really got into the development of this area of one one area, but it's but it's very prominent. Is uh, what it's could have come down to. It's evolving since our last conversation. Is that really it is uh, science, psyche, and spirituality? Okay. Oh. The encounter, yeah, the encounter of Carl Gustav Jung with the Bhakti Siddhanta of traditional India. So that's kind of like a. Our title now for this section: yeah. Science, Psyche, and Spirituality: The Encounter of Carl Gustav Jung with the Bhakti Siddhanta of, of, of traditional India. That's beautiful. You know, science and it's spirituality some, itself is a very, uh, yeah, very yeah. common. At the same time, it has become a somewhat hackneyed subject because there's so much discussion on it. Mm-hmm. But you bring in psyche, mm-hmm. then it becomes yeah. distinctive, and it also becomes very relevant. Yeah, because that yeah. is an. that is an area where everybody is affected in one sense the mind is something which yeah. is very real for everyone <laughs> it affects everyone troubles everyone so psyche is <laughs> I, i think Car- 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 carl jung carl jung would in case they tend to disagree with you in some way it's that some, some people are not some people are not even on the mental platform yeah and that 80% of their consciousness is in their muladhara chakra Urinating, defecating, copulating. That's eighty percent. You know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, oh we don't. We don't meet them. Yeah. Yeah. 
And of course, the other thing is that I think what it, Jung was born, Bhatti Siddhanta was born 1875, I think. It's in my, I got my PowerPoint show there somewhere. Yeah, I can look it right up. There it is. Yeah. Um, you want to share? Bhatti Siddhanta was, oh, okay. well, and that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Bhatti Siddhanta was born 1875. And Carl Jung was born 1876, you know. Oh, and, okay. And, yeah. And so, Bhakti, and I said, we've also we're discovering, we're going ahead here now, that Bhakti Siddhanta participated in the industrialization of the Orient. You know? Yeah. His life was right when the, you know, when, when the industrialization of the Orient. And Carl Jung was participating in the industrialization of the Occident, you know. The, uh, it's amazing. The, okay. The first, oh yeah, it is. It is. And now, as far as I can understand, the Krishna is saying enough of this industrialization. You're killing yourselves and everybody else. You know, I'm I'm taking it away. I, you know, you, 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 we're defining industrialization as uh, expert production, expert 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 mass production. Uh, 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 boy, localized. Expert mass production for dis for distribution at a distance. <laughs> oh, Localized okay. That's already expert production. Okay. Yeah, yeah, other people too. Yeah. Yeah. But Hollywood, of course, in Bollywood, they're also doing the same thing with emotions, right? They they go with one place. They have always expert skill and everything else, and then they produce they produce Hollywood and Bollywood the stuff for for distributing emotions. The you know, mass distribution of emotions that we should feel this way, we should think this way, we should love this way, we should, you know, lament this way, you know, yeah. That's so, industrialization. So, if we're going to now, if we're going to, going to, you know, get out of the, get out of the, the mess, then it's very, very good, good to look at how it developed, you know. Mm. And then maybe then we can extract, can extract the good things, you know. And okay, we got to move back to the village. You know, we got to be based there. We got to change our mode of communication. Yeah. So it's, that's what we're discovering is that the two of them, looking at the, you know, and of course, Prabhupada is, you know, is Bhakti Siddhanta, you know, but looking at the two of them, you see them, that this is what, that they, one of the major things what they both were going, and also it was industrializa industrialization of academic uh, thought, you know, how we're organizing our thinking processes, and the two of them, the two of them were going through that, and, and Jung was going through it very deeply in, in Europe, and and then Bhakti Siddhanta, and of course, and of course, they, you know, Jung went to India. Jung actually was actually went there with the with the Indian Science Congress, Indian Science Association. You know, and it's a, okay. a very, very interesting. They did a very very wonderful when book. Was this? written roughly which year was this? Ah, boy, um, maybe like nineteen. 35 or something, 32. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah. India was in political turmoil yeah. a little bit at that time. The independence movement was quite active. We had... Yeah. I, 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 see, this is where I need help. because I need help from Jungians to get a timeline. But right, right away, you're looking back at your heritage. Yeah. You're thinking about, you know, yeah, because but, but, uh, what was happening in the West, you know? It's a very, very nice book. I mean, in our research, our work, you know, we met Bernardo Nantes in Argentina. And then he was very, very, he, very excellent scholar. Maybe one, maybe one of the biggest Indologists in all of South America. You know? It's very nice, Jungian. And so then he, I said, I'm trying to find about, about Jung and India. And he said, oh, there's a book. It was a book already written. You didn't know? No, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, okay. So I think it's called Carl Jung in India. And one lady did it. And like so many of their things, when she started to research it, this thing started happening. Synchronicity, she found things, she found people. And they are extremely good historians, extremely good, you know, Sarvabhoma, extremely good jnanis. They're you know, very honest in their, 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 their research and everything. You know? okay. So she, um, yeah, so as I mean, we could discuss so many things, but, that, but that's one very, very excellent book and how it developed and how Jung went there. And what his experiences was when he went to the Kali temple in uh, Kali Ghat, you know, where they were sla the slaughterhouse in Calcutta, where they, where they, where they slaughter all the animals there. What's that place called? They still do it. 
yeah it's a there's a ghat is just get the name one minute so yeah it's interesting so the way you are looking at this is that uh, uh you can I means i'm just trying to understand the the broad when you are bringing these two thinkers in dialogue uh, or looking yeah. at the dialogue so is it to to show uh like you you know, right now you talk about the historical context in which bhakta siddhant and karl jung existed it seems to be similar but did bhakta siddhant thakur directly comment about karl jung also or means what is the overall angle that you are trying to uh, bring in these two in dialogue in so uh, um well it goes on for in all of our literature is a dialogue what, 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 what do we have we have a uh, uh teachings of lord chaitanya Okay. Okay. Very very nice book. Very nice book. Shri Prabhu was not planning on doing Chaitanya Charitamrita as far as I know. He thought teachings of Lord Chaitanya was good. It was very complete. And other other people too go to Vaishnavas, you know, comment, "Oh, it's wonderful," you know. So, what is it what is it, what is it composed of? Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Meetings, dialogues. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and some of them are on, on one scale there's dialogues of ramananda roy which are, are so esoteric the prabhu yeah. you know says says he's not even going to talk about them but when he introduces the bhagavatam he said later when we have more spiritual advancement then we'll discuss these things you okay know? then on the opposite side we have what we have uh, bhakti siddhanta saraswati i mean no, i mean sarvabhuma bhadacharya mm. and prakashananda saraswati you know and you know how how he how lord chitanya approached the dialogues with, with, with different groups like that you know yeah mm. yeah yeah so many strategies you no know, but i mean how, how you know i mean how, how much of our literature is dialogue are there dialogues between say people from with different belief systems where both sort of maintain their belief systems generally the dialogues end in some kind of conversion Yeah, <laughs> most of the times, yeah, yeah. Well, in the in a higher level, it's not necessarily conversion, but it's like that's the idea is that uh, Prabhupada said of all the Western philosophers, Carl Jung seems to have the most sense. Yeah, that's one of the things I you know went ahead like that. Yeah, yeah and definitely he does. And so, mm. um, if as we're going back to the spiritual world, Canto Two. and it says hey this chahari krishna go go to goloka but it says if you have some attachments then along the way stop off at the shishumaru stop off at the vaishvanara planets you know yeah you know, these different lokas you know we have bhagavata amrita you know gopu kumar you know so if you have a lot of attachments at a certain level you know level 7 <laughs> or something out of 10 then someone like carl jung is so useful because that that's what we're trying to investigate but it, it appears that he was actually experiencing uh hiranyagarbha you know uh, mm. above the varat roop and below paramatma that's where he was kind of like he was living that you know I, i mentioned this last time he would he would have these experiences from the time he was a child he'd meet you and he would say look at you and see experience your your previous karma your your future karma and he would say something like you know mr charan the dog is okay the dog is okay and people would have these like you know like you know all their vasanas he was experiencing their vasanas no and informing them and then they would you know they would relieve these things you know these there's a fair amount as as far as what was it, past life regression to hypnosis yes. and studies of reincarnation and even near death experiences as far as you know, these are all scientifically acceptable now it's taken some time to do it but you got to be very careful and very very you know strict about your methodology and you know and everything else but they are now they are acceptable forms of scientific investigation and dialogue yeah. Yeah. in mainstream science also uh, i mean yeah. of course you can decide what mainstream there's a debatable what mainstream <laughs> science means but yeah, yeah i've seen that it's more at least in terms of the th- therapeutic value as compared to their say ontological value whether those memories are real or not that yeah, yeah. debated but those memories yeah. do seem to heal people and that yeah. uh, that has been significantly documented 
Yeah, and also beyond that, I mean, now I mean, people, as far as I'm seeing, people, people directly in university posts and, and are you know are researching it and stuff. Yeah, oh. in psych- departments of psychology and so on. Yeah. Oh, that's. But amazing. again, this has to be. Of course, Ian, Ian Stevenson was very famous. Ian Stevenson was very yeah. very famous with long time ago, and he was you know, they were these were tough people. They were academically very strong, well connected, at the same time too very rigorous in what they did. Yeah, but he focused more on spontaneous past life memories because I wrote a book on yeah. reincarnation, so I did some research. So he yeah, was yeah, yeah. not very much in favor of hypnotically induced uh, yeah, yeah, past yeah. life memories. But then you know, there are some which are involving xenoglossy and xenography, and they are so remarkable. Somebody speaks a language which was extinct yeah, yeah, yeah. for 1500 <laughs> years. <laughs> what does that yeah. happen? And they bring they bring some expert in from the university with a long white beard with dictionaries you know, covered with dust and he pulls it up and he said yes yeah, that's so so well that that means hayloft that means hayloft you know, you know where you keep the hay you know. yeah. oh okay yeah 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 it's very you know yeah. so you are saying you are connecting this with the psyche more or less that all these psyche explorations in the domain of psyche are becoming more mainstream is that what you are trying to in- when you go the experiences, what are you trying to? What is the point you're making? Our past life um, and hypnotically induced. Okay. All right. Before we were saying, well, we're trying to build bridges between different yes, communities. Right. Yes, you know? right. But but we but we but you know, following Carl Jung and everybody else using iconographic thinking, and you know, we have this name Hanumat Preshak. Okay. You know. Okay. So we realized that 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 wasn't that's not Hanuman's job. You know, at that point, as Hanumat Preshak, his job is not to build bridges. His job is simply to investigate the necessity and the possibility of building bridges. Oh. So okay. at this point, all we're doing is seeing is, you know, Prabhupada said one time, the, the letter on management, when he established the GBC, he also made comments about sannyas ashram. And he said, uh, he said that, that the sannyasis should travel to our temples to enliven people. And they said they should. They can also discover new places uh, for opening temples when they should report them to the GBC. So here we're discover, trying to discover intellectual communities. You know, that will be. You know, for, we're also doing interfaith dialogue, and we're also working on. Uh, you mentioned before we did the Hamlet and Arjuna, you know, world classical yeah. literature, and those have been very effective in, in you know selling books, everything. Hamlet and Arjuna have oh, done it so many times. I'm exhausted by the thing, you know. Yeah, but but it is. It's, it's you know, West uh, Hamlet was I think I forgot who, what William Butler Yeats or something said. All the world has wept because a puppet was once melancholy. <laughs> so so <laughs> Hamlet is uh, Hamlet is just a, you sent me that essay. I didn't get a chance to look at it yet, but Hamlet is still. It's just. It's, a, it's an intense part of our, our Western culture. It's an intense, anybody in the industrialized world, industrialized world brought with it. And I, I mean, it's right here. I can, I can tell you right now, if you don't think Hamlet is, is a number one big seller, I can you know, tell you something right away. You know, you know mm-hmm. The Lion King. The Lion King. Yeah. That, that movie, it, it's directly based on that particular story. They, 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 they say it directly, The Lion King. I think it costs like maybe uh, fifty million dollars to make, and it's made back something like six hundred million dollars. <laughs> and then they made they made a new version of it. I haven't even heard, you know. You know? Mm. And it's full of the worldview. It's full of psych, full of um, philosophy. What is, there's one song. What is it? The song of life, mm. the cycle of life, or whatever it is. It's, you know, it's just like it's, it's kind of like Brahman. It's a level of Brahman realization and pantheism. <laughs> and they were all connected up like that, and you know, we, we're not destroyed in, in, in a certain sense, you know. Mm. So anyway, that's world classical literature, uh, science in the Vedas, the Bhaktivedanta Library. And this one, of, of Carl Jung kind of fits in with all those things oh. in some ways. But for us, for our nature, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fascinating what you said. It's like Prabhupada says sannyasis should open new temples, but we can expand that to, it's basically temple is an outreach avenue. So it could be intellectual yeah. outreach avenue also and intellectual communities who would normally not go to any temple. They would come to a, mm-hmm. say, as you say, a 
if there is a conference on Carl Jung and Bhakti Siddhanta, they may come for that. Yeah. So people yep. Who yep. not normally be reached, <laughs> they will be reached by this. Yes. Pra Prabhupada said, when I was working, of course, so much of my formation was with the Bhakti Vedanta Institute, with Bhakti Srub Dhamara Maharaj, you know. Hmm. And uh, Prabhupada wrote to him, he said, the Bhakti, Bhakti Vedanta Institute is for people who will not, normal, not come to, normally come to our temples, but everything that goes on in our temples will also go on there. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, so you so put it in a certain format. There's Krishna Kata, there's Prasadam, you know. And he, he Prabhupada said you could have a he said the first conference you should have a bust of me, my bust, you know, at, at the conference, you know. Okay. And he said, I will be personally present. You put a garland there, you know. And so yeah, there's there's you know, so many ways you see of, of, of communicating the ideas and also taking advantage. You know, Bhakti, Bhakti Vinod Thakur says when we're in somebody else's place of worship at the time of worship, and we should think like this. The same God I'm worshiping is being worshipped here. You know? uh, and I can learn from this tradition how to enhance my own my own worship. I can pick up different things and stuff, you know, Sunday feast, <laughs> whatever. Mm. And he said, but because I belong to a certain tradition, I won't be participating in the details the details of this particular perspective like that and so on you know so that's true okay so so the the and this boy okay i don't worry stuff so after we talked last time you know we, we've been doing this for so long you know how, how long did lord chaitanya have to sit and listen to sarvabhama before he was able to talk seven days huh? yeah, and sarvabhama could probably talk it was probably at least a good eight, eight hours or something <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is a, and you see that the strategy in this environment, and Prakash and Saraswati, we see many times the strategy in this environment is that, yeah, first, you know, it's a fact. You show respect, listen, and, and show people that you really understand, you know, what, what they're talking about. You appreciate their ideas, you know, yeah, their ideas and their attitudes and their perspectives, you know, and their, and their culture of social relationships and, and who the leaders are. So in any case, just basically really for, for probably six years, we've been trying to come in contact at least with Shonu Shamdashani. Mm. Maybe you can share, 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 the, can you share, the, share, share the slides there. Can I, can I share my screen? Yes, please, Mahaj. There's my Hanuman. <laughs> <laughs> Ashokban. Yeah. Ashokban. It's a, it's a beautiful Ashokban. I have a whole collection of Ashokban pictures. Yeah. Oh, really? That's amazing. Oh, oh yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Maybe we should See, yeah, well, discuss Hanuman pastimes, Maharaj, and your personal realization about Hanuman pastimes. Hmm. Yeah, that what, it comes into one of these categories. So it's world classical literature. Here we go. We got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is what we have here. Yeah, we have uh, Inovati Siddhanta, 1875, Carl Jung, 1876, and Prabhupada. Of all of them, he, Carl Jung, seems to have the most common sense. Dialectical spiritualism. Yes. So April, we had a teleconference finally with uh, H.P. Swami, Radhika Raman Das, and Professor Shonu Shamdashani. This is a nice picture. Okay. Uh, and again, this had been like six years of, of reading the literature and writing letters and, you know, getting no response and then, and then talk, going to different conferences, meeting different people, inviting them to participate in our programs. And in South America, Shonu Shamdashini went there at the invitation of the Union community. And we, there we, we met him for the first time physically. And the devotees had put uh, a collection of ladus. You know, I mean, ladus, they went a little, little box with a pretty little box with a little plastic cover. And they sat there very nicely. <laughs> and then I went up on stage. And uh, I was, yeah, I was for, for me, it was like approaching Adolf Hitler or something, or <laughs> something like I mean, Buddha. <laughs> Buddha or something. So I was very nervous, you know. Sa same time too, uh, you know, I was, I could see I, the strength was there coming from Krishna, from my work, from chanting rounds every day. So he went up on stage after the program and he was signing some copies of the Red Book. Then I, I said, oh, you probably know about us from, from Beverly Zabriskie and uh, Patricia, other people. And he said, oh, yes. And then he saw us at a symposium they had in Santa Barbara. We were there and he saw us. Okay. And I said, oh, we, we're publishing this magazine, Solaris, and gave him some copies of the very beautiful magazine we did. And uh, I think, well, I, hopefully, we'll be, 
get a chance to talk with you about you know, some of the areas that we're interested in and developing between, you know, the uh, Oriental philosophy, the Bengali Vaishnavism, and and Jungian uh, Jung's thoughts, you know. And we also have some some ladus. And uh, he, he said, "Oh, I like ladus." <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> and they were very they were very good ladus, I have to admit. So that was very very nice uh, meeting with him. But we didn't get any chance after to really talk to him. And he's, he's also, of course, he's a very busy person. He's a very wonderful, wonderful person. It's just his scholarship and his sincerity and, and intelligence, everything else are just, you know, quite extraordinary. Yeah. So anyway, he, he was um, he was Cindy community, Cindy, and he was yeah, interested yeah, in spirituality, yeah. like I guess so many young men. Mm. And eventually that ended up in Carl Jung. And he thought psychology was in a big mess. So finally he became a professor of the history of medicine at the University of London, which, if you know it, is maybe the most powerful university system or the oldest university system in England. So I guess he may be, you know, whatever. And so now, now, now he's actually dean. After that, he's become his co-dean for international studies. But he developed this whole area. They started the Philemon Foundation, which is in a specific for publishing Jung's works. And they... Uh, the Red Book, he, he then, I guess, instrumentally convinced the, 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 the uh, descendants of Jung, his children who had all the copyrights, that it was time now to release the Red Book, which was Jung's personal notes, which is so beautiful, on his experiences, you know, with meditation, these things like that, which were driving his external philosophy. Hmm. So that was published, you know. And so finally, we had a very, very good dialogue with him, you know. Uh, Okay. Uh, on the phone, or maybe last, and maybe almost an hour and stuff. And I, mean, I could, I could see that we, we were ready. We'd done our work, and Radhika was there. He's, of course, a you know fully integrated professor, and he, he knew the language. I didn't know the right words to say. He said, "No, we're, we want to do this and that." Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And so very, very, very good discussion. Then uh, and about what we're trying to do, our perspective, our attitudes, and everything else. And he, mm. and the, and he seemed very you know, convinced, yeah, this is a very good project. You have a, one million people on your side of the bridge, and, and you're appreciating <laughs> that, yeah, there are, there are very, very nice things. If you, know, if you have psychological problems, how many devotees? I mean, every devotee who reads Jung's books, and I've given to them, have said it's personally helped them in terms of their own like advancement in Krishna consciousness and dealing with different kinds of vasanas and things they have and the perspective and so on. You know? And some more than others, of course. You know? So it's a very use Jung is a very useful tool for us, you know. And at the same time too, it's like, you know, we have very, very wonderful taxonomy on perspective and everything else that the Jungian community can take advantage of. So, Maharaj, so again maybe so, yeah, yeah, no. so which aspects of no. our taxonomy are you presenting to them? Are you talking about the say the Subtle body, gross body, or the panchakoshas, or the chakras, or what? What aspect are you trying to bring into the dialogue from our side? Well, okay. <laughs> um, you know, it's like if you were trying to discuss Vedanta Sutra with with Sarvamama Bhattacharya, you know, you know, <laughs> Jiva Goswami discusses these things right in the sun, in his Sandarbhas. You know? yeah. But as far as I understand, talking to Radhika, everybody else. When, when, you, when you start the Sandarbhas, Jiva Goswami assumes you're already thoroughly familiar with, with Karma Mimamsa, you know, uh, Advaita, and, all, and, and, the, and Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. This is, this is a dialogue, a book for graduate students. It's not an introduction. The Sandarbhas are not introductory. Yeah. He, he doesn't mean, Radhika said one place he had a three-page footnote to explain, <laughs> to explain like what Jiva Goswami was talking about. To make it comprehensible to an Oxford level, you know, audience. You know, you know. so the same way is that I, I'm. I'm just. I've shown your and seeing what I've read, the kind of work I've done. He's appreciating. Okay, this guy is actually, you know, for not being a member of our community, he's actually quite well versed, quite well versed. And also, Professor Gupta and everybody else, it seems that they know their community, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and Bengali Vaishnavism, you know very well like that and then he recommended their latest book latest publication there um i can show that cg jung psychology of yoga and meditation okay oh okay uh, 
Now, these were lectures delivered at ETH Zurich. This is like the, uh, this is like the, uh, the Caltech or the MIT of, of Switzerland. Uh, I looked it up. It was then, this was done, you know, volume six, 1938 to 1940. So it was done during the actual, during the war. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I looked up ETH on the Wikipedia and their own webpage, and they were rated like number six in terms of, uh, of uh, engineering and science educational institutions in the world or something like that, and number two and stuff. And so they, they, they were, and they are, one of the most powerful and respected uh, engineering and science science schools in the world. And so, of course, they have to have, a, a, what do you call it, a, uh, uh, an academic, no, it's an academic requirement for engineers and scientists. You've got to take these things. So Jung was a part of that. I think it was maybe like once a month he was giving a, on a Friday, he would do like maybe a three-hour lecture on, on exactly the things we're talking about, the history of psychology, the perspectives of the Orient, and these kind of things. And they had to use the biggest auditorium, maybe 600 people, and I would, would fill it out. You know? mm -hmm. So his colleagues said, Jung, you're being, Carl, you're being just too intense and too detailed in these things, you know? And, and, and Carl Jung said, no, I'm going I'm to give him the real thing. I'm not going to water it down. I, I understand it's a general audience. I, I'll present it that way. And, and it, 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 they didn't lose interest. <laughs> Even though they may not have understood everything, people kept coming. So I've start, I got the book, and I ordered it. We started reading it. We're doing our work. And it was $21.08. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there it is. That there was proof, proof from God, and synchronicity. There. That's the, the other Kindle book. And again, it's uh, they. I mean, maybe I mentioned this before because it, you know, you know, in 1938 they weren't tape recording these things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But 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 people people had their notes. Jung had his notes. They got his notes. They got mm -hmm. the notes or uh, the summaries from different very very qualified women professors. And then two people were taking shorthand of the things, you know. And then it started about maybe about eight years ago, you started working on this thing. So it's just incredible. Maybe more than that, I can show you the, the acknowledgments, the history. Incredible sacrifice people did to do this. They, shorthand is, is no lot, nobody does it anymore. It's actually a disappearing ability, you know. So they got a grant from the, uh, I think it was from Harvard or someplace, to some old person, gentleman, they got him to go through the, the, the shorthand of the people who'd taken the notes. And it's very, it's very personalized. So he had to learn their, their, their quirks. And he was unable then to transcribe those to, 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 to tell them what they said. So from these, they were able to reproduce you know, these lectures and everything else. And in, in the uh, introduction, he said these are probably, it was, it was given for a general audience, a general educated audience, scientific audience, you know, undergraduate students. So, 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 you know, that's one advantage of it. Is he doesn't use all the technical terms he would have used with other psychologists. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, um, what he does is he said, he said it, it is probably, it's probably be more useful and more accessible for a modern audience than it is it was at that time. And that's what I'm seeing is that now we can understand these things on this level and stuff he's talking about. It's like it's an instructive now. So, and I'm beginning to understand that. Shonu Shamdashi and I were talking about our tradition, and he was, you know, rather than try and answer questions, he said, we'll meet again in September. Someday we'll try and meet again, and I'll bring so-and-so, who was a very, very prominent, very qualified professor, you know. And Radhika said after that, he said, you don't, you don't mind making, you don't mind listening to people making fools of themselves by yourself. But if you start bringing, bringing colleagues, you know, you're not going <laughs> to subject them to a bunch of fools talking, you know. So therefore, you know, he must have given, must be respect us enough to want to do some, go ahead, the next dialogue. And also, I'm, I want, I'm, 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 uh, I, I want, I'm giving everybody copies of these monks' podcasts, you know. So that's uh, showing you Shamdashi and everybody else may be watching this bunch monks' podcast right now. <laughs> so therefore, therefore, I, therefore, I have to be careful to talk, talk well about him <laughs> so when he watches it. <laughs> okay. but, but not at all I mean, it's, I mean for to me it's, it's such a heartwarming you know opportunity to, to talk with him and everything else like that but that's one thing we're trying to find out 
I mean, how much does he know about, and in England, I guess it's almost impossible not to know about the, the Bhaktivedanta Manor and the Hare Krishna movement, you know? Hmm. But simultaneously, how much has he been able to uh, enter into, you know, our, our, our taxonomy and things like that? So Jung, looking at this, what he was doing at that time, he brought in three books, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, and then a, a Buddhist text, uh, which which include which is because you're trying to relate Buddhism to the more early, more early uh, Sankhya tradition like that, which is mm -hmm. not at all bad because you can see that Buddhism is very prominent, showing how a Buddhism was coming out of the same tradition, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. So I haven't got all three of them, but that's about maybe been about twenty percent of it so far. It was all the rest of my life and everything else. But we're trying to, it's what we're trying to do, everybody, you know, please join us. That's our whole whole process. This is a wonderful experience, wonderful community and from both sides. And afterwards, you know, we can go ahead with so much more uh, conviction about each other. That, yeah, here's a very, very, if you want to work, if, for example, if you need, if anybody asks me, so many people ask me because of my background about psychotherapy and these things. And yeah, there are, there are devotees who need psych psychiatrists. I mean, I can tell you very intense stories about devotees, you know, who should not stop taking their medication. I mean, yeah, I think that last I mean, I know what, 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 stories. Yeah, yes. yep, yeah. So we need it. Other people need, need uh, what's the word, very common, very common, rather common is um, um, epilep epilepsy. Yeah. Very common. Devotees have epilepsy. And so there, there are specific areas where we have to expand Prabhupada's ideas and, and into different areas and take advantage of you know, of, of specific specific things. They have to make it a global global resource, not just for certain kind of people. So mm -hmm. psychology is one area there where we can take so much advantage of human perspectives. And that's what I'm trying to investigate now. Maybe you, this next time, hopefully we'll be able to record everything and, uh, and get some very, very nice dialogue and investigation. And then, of course, that's the idea. Is we can include that in our movie, you know, uh, The Diary of a Traveling Creature, you know. And then we can also, uh, what's the other one? We can also then publish it in our journal Solaris and then go on with the dialogue. And automatically, you know, people reading it, re I'm buying their books, <laughs> hopefully. What I like to distribute is Teachings of Lord Chaitanya on this level. It's such uh -oh. a wonderful book for people. Yeah, on this, this level, it's just, okay. you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's it. So, I mean, so Yogi is using the terms klakoshas. So uh, what's it called? Uh, Adhyatmika Klesha, Adhyatmika Klesha, uh, Daivika Klesha. He's using the same term as very, very prominent from Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and so on. Okay. You know? and, and so that so many things. He talks about the collective, the collective uh, subconscious and the individual subconscious. And this is for us, I mean, how much does this correspond to Jivatma and Paramatma? You know, Jivatma and Paramatma. And it's just the you know, same same realization of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, the collective yeah. unconscious. Yeah. Sir, sorry, just to interrupt you, sir. The collective no, no, unconscious. No. So you're saying that's like the Paramatma. I mean, that's fascinating because uh, I thought about the individual subconscious being more like the uh, maybe some deeper impressions in the mind, but it seems that for him, the unconscious refers more to the Atma. Because subconscious, yeah, subconscious, I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Prabhupada didn't like the word unconscious, and neither did Carl Jung, yeah, because it's not necessarily it's not like restrictive. You know? What's unconscious today can become conscious tomorrow, okay? So it's just uh, well, they, they use the term, they use the term, but generally speaking, the word subconscious is better than subconscious, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. So, so you're saying that the individual subconscious is. Not so much like the hidden layers of the mind. It is more you're talking about the Atma itself. It's uh -huh. fascinating. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so just to elaborate this question, it seems in the Western philosophy, intellectual tradition, there is some amount of conflation between mind and spirit. Because they talk about the dialectic of mind and matter. So, But, but in our understanding that what they call as non-material, there is both mind and spirit in it. So, is there yeah, yeah. some indication in Carl Jung's writings that, uh, that he recognized this difference, or were there layers of the psyche, or layers of subtle selfhood, or something like that? <laughs> okay, 
So this this is a question we want to ask Shonu Shamdash and, and his friend. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I have a suspicion that Carl Jung's realization was different when he was like 16 years old, you know, 26 years old, 56 years old. And as he was going on, his realization and, and comprehension was different. Yeah. Um, okay, it makes sense. The, I think my, my, my perspective is he, is he he was above Virat Rup, you yeah. know, which is kind of mechanical. And the next level, as far as I'm understanding, is Hiranya Garba, which is the, the golden spermatozoa, which is very, you know, like, Alive, frightening, you know. And then, so when, then above that, you know. So I just remember, when you say above Virata Rupa, Virata Rupa means more like appreciating the magnificence, the greatness of the universe. That is the level of realization. That's what yeah, you yeah. mean by Virata Rupa? Yeah, but what Arjuna saw. You know, yeah, of course. It's that described so many times, you know, but, it's, it's, but it is. It's kind of impersonal and stuff. And Hiranya Garba is in it starts to become this potent, you know, potent person, with some personality and personal thing in it. And the next level of Paramatma, and the Paramatma is almost like chat was a kind of chapter chapter eleven and chapter ten and chapter eleven. Eleven with Paramatma is what it starts to be the hand of God in things and we can have a relationship, you know, like that praying and seeing him helping us and appreciating how kind he is and you know, like that. So I I, I don't think he was of course when you're on a certain level you see ahead of yourself. And you see back, and sometimes you fall back and stuff. It's not like German boxes. So that's a whole question about you know Jung, Jung and, and monotheism. It's a very uh, very interesting question. You know, many people have broached this. You know, so so at least at that level, I would say he was good because Varna Ashram Dharma is a part of the Bharat Rup. Yeah, it's a part of the Bharat Rup. Yeah, these these are things. You know, the, 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 ver, the, the version, well, boy, you go with po William Blake. You know William Blake's poem, The Sunflower, that we did yes. last time? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. But these are, this is this, Carl Jung would just go through this and would just like, you know, Blake in general is another area where specifically, you know, people love William Blake and that poem. These are all like iconographic things, you know, the king, the, the nobleman, the Brahmin, the priest. You know, these are all things that everybody can relate to and they're unavoidable. You, you have to, you know, you have, you have to adopt these, right, to live, you know, yeah. and, and, and they're, they, they grab you, you know, they're icons. Why, why is James Bond such an icon for Americans? You know, there's so many psycho, psychological analysis of James Bond. It's still going on because there are certain iconographic things about him which resonate with our American, you know, Baba and how we look at life and how we understand it and respect it. Okay. So same way, Carl Carl Jung is on this level. Then the Virat Rup, it, it, the, 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 this collective subconscious to him is something which everybody deals with. You know, everywhere you're going to find the virgin shrouded in the snow, the, the youth pined away with desire. You know that, that when the travelers when the traveler's day is done, <laughs> it's like these are things oh. everywhere. Appreciates it, touches them. Yeah, I've been there. I've done that. Yeah, I did it, man. I, yeah. Anybody here ever take the long chance? You know? Yeah, I took the long chance. <laughs> you know that these are things which, in life, for example, if you if you never risk everything, never risk everything on one throw of the dice for Krishna. <laughs> okay, like Maharaj Yudhisthira. <laughs> okay, <It's> everything. <laughs> it's so iconographic that. You've missed something in life, but you haven't taken that, that chance. You know? So Carl Jung was appreciating that. He, he, for example, when he came to America, he wanted to do uh, interviews with, with Negroes. <laughs> that oh, just, okay. like whatever it was, with Negroes. You know? Black people, you say now. Yeah. Because he wanted to see if black people had the same dreams as white people, you know, the same like images and stuff. This is what he was, what he was dealing with. It was 1935 or something. And he was so much of them, but he was discovering these iconographic things that would touch everybody. And so, that, so he was calling it the collective uh, subconscious that we all deal with that. It's like, it's like the Paramatma with that psychological level. But I'm thinking oh, of the goal okay. or, or purify the three worlds, you know, 
Yeah, was it 1047 63? Bande Nanda, Rajasrinam. Uh, their the cha loud chanting of the glories of Hari purifies the three worlds. Yeah? Hmm. So the, the Bu, Buba. You know, so when we're thinking, when someone dies, they're no longer on the gross world, Bu Mandala, but Bu, 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 was it Bu, Buba? They're there. And if we produce some be beacon thoughts, you know, hey, here's a lighthouse for you. We're still remembering you. Don't get lost. You know, yeah, these things, you know, what, what is what is Rome? You know? All these things are ideas. And I would say that part, they're part of the Virat root. And, and, and we, when we have our own individual little part of that, of our, our subconscious. So it's, a, you know, it's our, our subtle body and, and the big subtle body. And yes. you, you're almost appreciating that. And, you know, yeah. mm. So Maharaj, overall, I'm understanding that this is an area where there is a lot of potential for research. And right yeah. now, you could say we are in the developmental stages of even yep. what a <laughs> okay. So what areas the dial what areas the dialogue will happen and which direction it will take? All this is is actually in a sense developing. Mm. So do you uh, I mean if I may ask this, have you found uh, second generation devotees, or should we call it third second generation devotees? Who are interested also in taking up this dialogue? Mm. Yeah, we're in the third generation now. Yeah, I mean, Iskon is in third generation. I mean, the I don't know what age. Like, the third generation is maybe what age group now? Maybe like fifteen years old. Oh, okay. No, at, so least, at least. Okay, I was yeah, thinking. At least. Okay, how? What is the word then? Say, I was talking like say, Prabhupad, uh, in the Prabhupad, then Prabhupad's disciples, then Prabhupad's grand disciples. That won't exactly be okay, generation, so, is it? What will be the word for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generation, generations of diksha, formality. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, one time I was I was in I was in Mayapur for one I was uh it was an ILS meeting or whatever it is running here and there, and I saw uh, Bhakti was it um from Russia. Uh, Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj, you told me that Bhakti, Kal Young is yeah, writing for Western outreach. Yeah. Yeah, we we're running by, we we're both running, and I said, What are you, he said, What are you doing? What are you doing? I said, I'm working with Carl Jung and stuff. And he said, Oh, Jung is essential for our preaching. You know, so but I wasn't able to catch him again because yeah, I think he was he was too much involved in the administrative work, you know. Hmm. And, and and I think for Russians, of course, this is very much, you know. So that's what I'm trying. I'm, I'm with our, these podcasts and I keep promoting them and trying to focus on these areas, and then people, you know, waking up to the possibilities. Jai Patakamara said one time, he said, he said, Hanumapri Saksami is doing such incredible pioneering work. But that's my, my parents. My family have always been pioneers. You know, we're, mm. you know, I've, I've seen that for generations now. It's a few people doing work. You know? Yeah. And so, I, you know, again, try, and I'm especially trying to consolidate, and this is what we found. But, but it's not an area, again, it's not most people, most people are not going to work in this area. You know? I mean, what is it? Uh, uh, out of out of a thousand people, you know, nine hundred will be will be shudras. I'm, I'm I'm you know shudra brahmana brahmana brahmana. My, my nature, I just okay. I like, I like making PowerPoint shows. Oh, God. Yeah, I like making PowerPoint shows. I like physical. You know, yeah. So I mean, most people will be you know have physical nature. They become artisans and everything else. The you know the Nanda Maharaj of Vaisha. Okay, the gopis are, are ladies. Yeah, yeah. So the prophet said the gopis knew everything because they would go to go to the, the classes given for them by the brahmanas. They would watch puppet shows, you know, and they would understand everything. They knew everything about the cosmos, but they would have to receive it through songs and puppet shows and that kind of thing like that, you know. And so, mm -hmm. so, so uh, nine nine hundred will be vaishas, uh, nine hundred will be shudras, ninety will be vaishas. And we see that a few five five people they get together. By Vaishas can have one of the biggest corporations in the world. You know, they, they can get so many more people organized, thousands like that, you know, with five Vaishas working together. You know what they're doing. You know, Hewlett Packard, so many, Micron. And then, okay, and then nine will be Kshatriyas. And that's, that's rare. You know, somebody who actually is a noble, honorable king and, you know, and can take up political science and intrigue and all these things. You know. And then finally, one will be a Brahmin, you're saying. You know, intellectual, you know, and of course we Westerners are just kind of trying to, you know, <laughs> there are tendencies, Prabhupada said. 
So that's another point. It's very fact. It's very rare, uh, and just numerically, that people will be interested in this kind of intellectual work and then be, being able to actually produce something by, we'll call it useful from it you know, that will influence people. So we're trying to make a nice movie that will be, you know, that people, people can appreciate, you know. Yeah. That's fascinating. Can you tell a little bit more about the movie? So the movie. Yeah. So is it more like is it a movie yeah. or is it more like a documentary? Uh, so I started I, I started movie making a long time ago myself, you know, doing making some movies and associating with people. And then when I became a devotee, when Prabhupada left, I was thinking, wow, you know, Prabhupada gave us the books. Bhakti Siddhanta uh, fought, fought the, the, the battle with the caste Brahmins. That was his mission, right? To establish that Vaishnavas are Brahmins, or Bhakti Siddhanta's mission. And mm -hmm. Prabhupada's mission was to, 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 to distribute the literature all over the world, you know, in, in the English language, all over the world. So I was thinking, well, our job is to make movies out of it, put it in the popular media. You know? And I talked to Bhakti Chiru Swami, and he said, yeah, that was my... You know, my uh, my impression too. You know, so he did Abhay Charan series and stuff. You know? <clears throat> so, um, and different media, different kinds of media and communication now. But but movies, I think, are still still it's for intellectuals and also for um, <clears throat> for for the masses. The masses, most people, you know, they need they need to see a story. They need to see a puppet show. I mean, movies are nothing new. The movies are just puppet shows. You see what I mean? No? Mm. Before you have puppet shows with little people and strings, but now you just do it with movies. And, stuff. and of course, you get animated movies, and it's exactly the same thing. Animated, the history of animation. You know? um, at the University of California, Berkeley, where I was, there's one entire block, which is the uh, Pacific Film Archives. Beautiful building. And they've been archiving, you know, and retaining movies from as far back as they can get them. And in very, very one, and you can get to do a doctorate there. It'd be very nice for, for a devotee who wanted to do a doctorate. You can do a doctorate in the history of cinema, you know, like that, and how it's influenced people, you know. Oh. You know for example, co communism. I think one of the one of the most what 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 movie uh, do you think had influenced communism? Made it made it really help helped it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's Battleship Potemkin. Battleship Potemkin, by, by, by the guy, for the guy's name. But that was the whole thing about the revolution of the, the battleship sailors, uh, you know, against the communists, against the capitalists, or the royalty and stuff. So different movies have been so iconographic, it has hit people, and that, you know, changes the way they think. So movies are very powerful media. <clears throat> yes. In Peru, we've been able to work with Oscar Natters. Oscar Natters. He he won he uh, won the uh, the Latin American Critics Award as best director for one year, you know, and then after that, of course, the Peruvian Peruvian nation gave him the highest the highest cultural award. So we made made about maybe five movies with him, and of course now they're worth a fortune because after he won the award, we did uh, Light of the Bhagavat. I've seen it fifty two times. I, we present you know Light of the Bhagavat. We do a symposium, and then we. Uh, <clears throat> to show the movie. It's like 38 minutes. It's my lingual. You can click Spanish or English. And I, I watched and I, I, okay, I, I won't stay for the movie this time, but I just can't. Well, once it starts, I just grab, you know. He's a genius. We, okay. Yeah, we, we sometimes, let's well, say, uh, Light of the Bible. English, English, it's, 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 it's bilingual. It, it, there's no, it, almost no talking what it is he has. He takes the texts, nothing but the text. And he puts images in and for the things like that. He brings out things that I wasn't even aware of and ideas. And it's, it's, it's iconographic. So you can watch it again and again. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a dialogue. I mean, it's a little bit of a narrative going on in that storyline. But, but a lot of it is just like he's presenting the images, taking a word and illustrating it in terms of war. And it has incredible footage from the Vietnam War and so many things. And it's just, you know, it's just really takes you into the, the Baba of Light of the Bhagavad. You know? So he's, he's not our old friend and other people we have there. And so and that's the idea. We have a good crew and we're going to stay one place. We're going to show everybody we're starting a new village, new Ashok <laughs> okay. we, we, we rented the place, controversial. 
It's about uh, maybe an hour from Lima. Okay. And it has uh, six, bed six bedrooms and five bathrooms, uh, four acres, a uh, little orchard, and we'll, we'll plant a garden. And then we'll, 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 nobody can come in who hasn't gone through a quarantine. <laughs> so we'll have our own little village. Yeah. There are says people, this is an idea. This is how we think you should live. And then devotees are going to come from Santiago, probably, where we have tremendous connections, you know. And maybe come and maybe stay a couple of weeks during the six months. Okay. So, actually, the, the whole movie is, yeah. I mean, what you're talking about is so vital because few things shape people's minds in today's world as much as yeah. the movies do. Yeah. So, yeah. So, for 10-15 years after I became a brahmachari, even before I was not interested in movies, I was more interested in books. But after 10-15 yeah. years as a brahmachari, then there were some aggressively anti-religion, anti-Hindu movies that came through Bollywood. So some devotees oh. asked me how to respond to them. So that's when I looked at a couple of movies and then slowly it struck me that how much of the it's people's mind, people's thoughts, people's worldviews. They're shaped by movies. So sometimes yeah. you, we may just dismiss them. This is just sex and violence. And that is there. But apart from so, that, there's a lot more going on at a subtle level. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. The, um, yeah the, for example, if you go... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Now, just like there's Netflix, the Christians have started uh, something called Pure Flix. Oh, yeah. So... Yeah. Pure fix. They try to say that these are family-friendly movies. Of course, the quality yeah. is not great, but still, uh -huh. they are also recognizing the need to what they call it, uh, evangelize the movie industry. Oh yeah, mm. there was a guy maybe maybe fifteen years ago. He started the thing called a spiritual cinema circle, and he would they would mail out like five movies every month. They would mail mail out to their 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 clients. Oh, oh yeah, there, I mean, I mean there, there are there are some. There are some movies, religious movies, religious movies, which are just, you know, for example, Ben Hur. Oh, that is a classic. A totally. Oh, it's super. It's a, it's a classic doesn't give it enough enough weight. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It's just it. Um, I think when they finally, as I understand, when they finally started, you know, started editing the film, they, they took all the film, they recorded the movie and they started editing, editing into the movie. And I don't know, it had, it had something o over like 300,000 feet of film to edit, to edit from. I think maybe as much as a million feet of film, they had to edit that thing to get the final cut out of the thing, you know? Yeah. So, so there, yeah, yeah, that's just one. Another one is uh, more recently one is Joan of Arc. You know Joan of Arc? Yeah, I, I didn't know about this movie, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, Joan of Arc, uh, of course I know, but okay. Yeah. You know Mark Twain, right? Yeah, Mark Twain, of course, yes. Okay, what, what, are, his two, what are his two famous books? Uh, it's just, what is the name is just slipping off my tongue now. Yeah. So, sorry. Huckle. Huckle. Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> yeah. And sorry, Tom. Yeah. Tom Sawyer. Tom. Tom Sawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're very nice. They're very good books, you know? Yeah. But he but he he said that of all the stuff I've done, I think the best and the most important was Joan of Arc. And he also did a, a story of Joan of Arc, you know, like that. He thought okay. it was the very best he'd done, you know. So there were two of them came out at the same time, maybe about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. One was a television miniseries, one was a movie. And again, they're just so like intense. The the, the girl the girl who played uh, Joan of Arc, after that, she, she gave up acting. <laughs> after she played the part, she gave up acting. You know? Yeah. Oh, I, I, know, I know girls who are girls who they you know, really have their career. And I know one of them was actually our disciple. She, she just she said after she became a devotee, she decided she wasn't going to take any more roles where she, where she had to kiss men she didn't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. okay. I'm not going to take any more parts where I have to kiss men. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So what it is after playing Joan of Arc, what are you going to do after that? You know, it was such a, mm. you know, God was a kind of a white light, you know, but, but he was there. He was there and he was kind of a white light and showing up every yeah. now and again. Yeah. You know, so in, they're very, very, very. Yeah. yeah. Even in Maharashtra, 
there's a celebrated saying tukaram so oh yeah 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 karan yeah. prabhupada also mentions about him briefly so there was a classic yeah. movie about tukaram made and yeah. after the after the movie the actor who made that movie he just uh, he just renounced yeah. the world and became a became a devoted to tukaram yeah. like vittal basically so yeah so it's it's not just the impact that they have on the others but the impact that they have then it has on themselves also it's yeah. remarkable what what the actor who played the uh, uh, prabhupad in the abhay charan movie right yeah he became an issue he became an issue to the movie also oh i didn't know that yeah, as far as i know he was initiated by bhakti shri swami yeah. Yeah. oh okay. is, but what, it's the whole thing when our 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 our, our yoga is gandharva veda singing dancing and drama you know, the whole bhakti rasa me descend was a drama was based upon drama our whole tradition you know, lord chitanya was always acting it out so when you can carry it to the point of singing the, the dancing and drama then that's our yoga and it's it's, it's so powerful you know, once you do that you can experience the bhava and it's just you know yeah so communicative So movies. That's so that's actually a movie. We're trying to we're trying to work on it. I I know. Yeah, I, I I realize it. More and more, I'm going on like this. I'm realizing I'm a very small person. You know, uh, one one devotee. He's a he was a he was a famous sannyasi, GBC guru. Now I won't mention his name. <laughs> But as I remember, he he wrote to Prabhupada when he was a young brahmachari, American brahmachari in New York. And he said, "Said Prabhupada, I just can't stop thinking about illicit sex." And Prabhupada wrote back and said, "Yes, because of the birth you've taken, you will not be able to stop thinking about it." <laughs> He said, "But if you engage in devotional service, you will be able to tolerate it." Yeah. yeah. Oh. So some things are going to be a part of our subtle body until the, the moment we die, and you know, and they get, you know, smashed away, like that. So yeah, we have certain things which we're going to accept. This is the the, the vehicle I have. You know. Unless I'm in, you know, Gopi Baba or something, I'm not going to be able to. You know, Prabhu said it's very difficult for not to think of myself as an old Indian man. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. So, so then, you know, so many kinds of media. Jayananda was an engineer. He got absorbed in building the Rathi Atra Card. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so I, I'm seeing myself. I just, just trying to chant Hari Krishna. Good association with people like your good selves and our. our Our podcast audience, you know, and then try and contribute what I can contribute. We we had a meeting with our direct. Yeah, yeah, day before yesterday, we met with our Rishabhanu Nandini and Ambarish, who are from Argentina. Other than mm. wife, and they're they're professional filmmakers. If you look at our 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 our, our you page tube, you'll you pay YouTube page. Uh, you'll see that the, how they're editing our stuff. Yeah, they're they're professional. And anyway, then our director Raúl Zavalos Zavalos. Uh, he's he was in Hollywood for some some time there. He's our director, so we get a director. We have cinematography people, and then we have the people researchers around the world. Probably we'll do South America from here six months. Maybe mm. we'll be able to, maybe we'll be able to be, do a podcast and show you some Peruvian monkeys. You can go through a we can go through a walk through the forest, <laughs> see Peruvian monkeys and everything else. And we'll come back to the U.S. maybe for uh, about Gorpanila. Maybe for a few months, and then Europe for a few months, and then maybe our idea by then, you know, maybe we'll finish finish the journey off in uh, in Radakun, yeah, into yeah. mm. the end of the journey, end of the journey, yeah. So, uh, Despite, so different, you know, for many communities. devotees who are hearing this podcast, uh, they will. I feel that uh, the sheer ambit of Krishna consciousness. is being radically expanded right in front of their eyes because sometimes we have mm. we have particular understanding krishna consciousness means this 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 and of course it means the standard practices are there as a foundation but there's so much more we can do at uh, so many innovative resourceful and deep ways now when you are speaking i was just thinking about uh, max muller max muller when he translated mm. the vedic the vedic texts it seems he wrote a letter to his wife he said that, yeah, that yeah. the way i am doing this is that i want to show the hindus that based on their own books the irrationality of their faith 
So, but he says, I won't live to see the success of what I am doing, but I know it will be <laughs> successful. So, you know, it's at that time. So it really requires intellectual work requires a lot. You could say, even if his purposes were somewhat questionable, but still it requires a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> it requires a lot of sattva guna and patience to envision this kind of work. Hmm. Uh, you know, Nietzsche, yeah, Frederick Nietzsche. Yes, yeah. yes. It's a whole. I mean, Carl Jung is 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 in that parampara. Uh, Immanuel Kant, Carl Nietzsche, uh, Frederick Nietzsche, and Carl Jung. So anyway, uh, and thus also sprach Zarathustra. That's what Zarathustra. Somewhere there, hmm. he he uh, he criticizes uh, Christianity as being a Jewish plot. As I remember, he says, "Oh, Christianity is a Jewish plot. You know, to try and <laughs> destroy destroy our culture." He says. Do you have no eyes for a plot that takes two thousand years to, to succeed? So it's also these kind of people okay. like people okay. like that. You know? I mean, when Papa Hans Ludwig having told me when Papa went to Germany, it was very successful, very potent. And German people are very. He said German people are the most intellectual, most intelligent of all the people in the world. He was saying that. No. Oh, okay. But materially speaking, materially speaking, the most intelligent people in the world. Uh, P and Oaks. P and Oaks is the origin of the word Deutschland is Deutsche Land. Yeah, Germany is Deutschland in Germany. Oh, okay. And P Oaks is actually it comes from the word uh, Deutsche. The Deutsches. Deutsches. Yeah, so the Deutsches okay. are the Deutschland. Oh. You can see big, tall, blonde, you know. Walk, okay. When they walk down the sidewalk, the earth should tremble. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, in, so anyway, Hansa Hansa Duda invited Papa to come for a second time, and he said, "Papa said, no, I cannot go there again. There are people there who would kill me." Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe the, the, the Germans were smart enough to figure out how dangerous Papa actually was. But this is not a person who is just doing some little yoga. Yoga wave that'll go on for to be gone after he's, he's dead. No, this is a person who's doing something which could have consequences, you know, for 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 millennia. You know, and so he this guy is dangerous. He should be eliminated. Yeah. So anyway, all, all of us. It's, it's it's true of all of us. You know, and not just me. I mean, I, what I was experiencing. Now I mentioned this to Radhika a couple of days ago, and he said the same same thing. Maybe you're experiencing it too with it with your monks podcast, Refi. Is that it really seems that our our community, our movement, is becoming mature in so many ways. And now the, the devotee, individual devotees, are, are maturing their their work. And like you're saying, they're saying they're consolidating and putting together. I mean, Giri Raj Maharaj is, was a recent book on it, build, build me a temple and so on. I heard such incredible comments. It's just people are devotees, and not just me, but many people are expanding in different areas now. You know? I mean, when I when I I was seeing a Gary Raj Maharaj's lectures here in Houston, it's just yeah, I can see it. We're, we we see each other. We're just to totally different kinds of people, but but it's but it's not co not contrasting. Some people I, I contrast with Jai Pataka Maharaj. We can just see you know, we're in South America together, and we're so contrasting. He's bigger than I am. I wear cotton. He wears silk. You know, just like he's like a you know. A, a CEO of CEO of the biggest corporation in the world, and I'm like, you know, head of six, six people. I guess six people in my organization. Yeah, you know, six thousand. So yeah, mm. but, but we appreciate each other. Gary Rajmar is more like we're more like complementary and stuff of this, you know, okay. together. Yeah. So I, anyway, it's, I think our whole movement is expanding like that and stuff. Mm. Yeah. So one thing that happens by this is also. That uh, for many devotees, m many more devotees and new people will find space in our movement. Because in one sense, we when the more we take uh, our Krishna consciousness to newer and newer circles, then people can also connect at different levels. Yeah, yeah. So that's a uh, yeah. That's so important. In one if. Now, recently, I've been reading a book on, say, something like the history of religion in India, and one of Ooh. the things, one of the things they say over there is that uh, that India, few countries have been subjected to as many invasions. Of course, every country has been yeah. invaded, but few, few, yeah. India was invaded so many times, and yeah. still the Indian culture, yeah, 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 Indian, yeah, yeah. Indian, you could say, 
yeah. Indian religious culture survived. And one reason yeah, yeah. for that was that it was nothing was very centralized or institutionalized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why you know people took had their inspiration, people had their religious experiences, mm-hmm. and they continued on. So, so that so what you are doing is, uh, in one sense, not only it's a pioneering, but it's also you could say, uh, re-establishing what was there in the past, because. This, in this decentralized way, people at different places were having dialogues with each other. There is this book written yeah. by one Indian thinker, the argumentative Indian. So oh. what he says is that basically is not using that in the pejorative sense. He says that he's talking about the Vada, how Indian culture was celebrated for different people having uh, argument arguments about different issues. And uh-huh. it, so in that sense, the word argumentative is a negative word, but the point was that that there is this culture of discussion and dialogue was very much there in India. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what... Rabindra R- R- Saroop, uh, yeah. he, he wrote one paper for one of our conferences, and that's exactly what he commented on, how so much of uh, Indian culture and philosophy has been dialogue, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you're saying, dialogue. Yeah. yeah the, okay. it's, a, it's a very prominent, prominent part of the whole perspective and so on. But that's, I mean, that's again, that's what Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Bible, he's saying, come, let us reason together. And even though your sins are as red as scar, are as red as blood, you know, they will become as white as snow. Of course, Bhagavad Gita says the same thing. But that's the whole thing by this, by the, by the dialogue process, we can go through so many things, you know, and make so much progress. And of course, oh Papa says, if you can, I, Papa says, even, Papa says, if you can even begin to understand Gopi Baba after 1,000 lifetimes, you're making rapid progress. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, we have so much to, okay. to endeavor. I'm, I'm still amazed. I'm still amazed at, you know, Carl Jung's realization of the Virat Rupa and everything else. You know? Yeah. It's amazing, Maharaj. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, I... Let me see how look at our, our PowerPoint show. Anything else we got here in our PowerPoint show? Yes, my Raj. Okay, see. I gotta just share one more thing. Um, because as we had in the beginning, every salesman has his own technique. Find your place in Shiloh Pava's movement. And that's what we were talking about with the, with the uh, Ministry of Education. That was our point, that the real goal of, of our education is that people come out and they know their place in, in the Sankirtan movement. When I made that presentation, Seisha Das, our Minister of Education, said he was, he was a little shocked because he said that that was exactly the opposite of what's been happening. People come out of our educational system, they don't know how to fit into ISKCON. <laughs> they can't find a, find, well, I said, well, I fit in, you know. So, yeah, so every salesman has his own technique, and we hear, see, and Prabhupada said that Lord, Lord Chaitanya, he, he, when he was preaching to, to Prakash and Nanda Saraswati, Prabhupada said, this is how a sannyasi should preach, you know? Yeah, and there's a certain way, and I, this, is, this, is, this is my nature, which is, in some ways, there are, there are great disadvantages to being having a sannyas nature. It has its own material attachments and so on, you know? And I appreciate that, you know? But, but that's a certain way, that's your nature, your body, your, your subtle body, so you end up, okay? And then I'll give you a picture of Hans Aduda and Chakravarti, preaching in Germany, and Hans Aduda had an association with him, and through him Prabhupada so much, and Prabhupada engaged in the same way. Mm-hmm. He was a real, like, like a mar- martially spirited type type guy, and, you know, the armies, and going out and preaching, and being brave, and stuff, and, you know, which for me is like, not my nature, and so on, you know. Mm-hmm. As far as the preaching work and Sankatan movement is concerned, everyone is was expected to do his daily share, According to the Lord's order, That's, that was the, uh, from the introduction to the Bhagavatam. And of course, we already mentioned the Philemon Foundation mm. and Shonu Sham Dakshini. Yeah. And this very, very wonderful conversation we have with them. Yes, nice. And of course, this book now, because we, 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 maybe last time we gave a little bit of a reading, reading list, but again, this is a new book, it came out quite recently. And I'm starting to read it, and, and, and my, the result is I'm finding it again. I'm taking my bookmarks in so many areas, 
you know, where people who are following this tradition can understand what we're saying with great benefit you know? mm. and also benefit for, but one thing I'm getting out of reading Yom's books and Shonar Shambhashini is I'm getting extremely educated. I even like this book, of course, he has a footnote. Jung, Jung mentions uh, Ramakrishna. You know, Ramakrishna. I think I have it here. Let's do that. I can go directly to that. I'll go to my Kindle thing here. Okay, here's one page. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, my much. This is page, uh, page 26 of 334 pages. 11 November, <laughs> 1938, lecture three. We won't meet next Friday. Being a Swiss, I am part of a national commission. I must attend their meeting and so sadly cannot be here next time. Last time we began to speak about the Amit, Amit, Amit Ayur Jnana Sutra. Sutra. Now, what does that mean in English? How would you translate that? Amit Ayur. Does it mean unlimited lifespan? Ayur is life. Yeah. Meditation that yeah. leads to an eternal life or eternal lifespan. Now, Amita comes from Amitabha Buddha. Amitabha Buddha. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you see, right away, it takes us into a whole culture of, of scholars and everything else, journey to the West. It's, once you understand journey to the West, I mean, you, you, again, I've, this book, um, in the good translations, recent scholarly translations, and of course, movies, Jackie Chan and Jet Li, what was it called, Forbidden Kingdom. So many, it just goes on and on being produced in you know, this, this story. So I was in the Chicago temple giving the Sunday feast lecture and maybe 200 people there in the lecture. And they had brought one uh, nice Chinese devotee, maybe about like, you know, 30, 35 years old, 32 years old, to pre preach in, in Chicago, because a lot of Oriental people there. And he brought two young, younger men, maybe like about 22, 23, you know, to the Sunday program. And you can see that they come in with him. He brought them and he was talking to them, preaching, you know. They were like a little sarcastic and stuff. What is this, you know, Indian people. They're, they're low class. We're Chinese people. We're high class. Okay. So anyway, yeah, but then when I just, I saw them there. Then I mentioned this fact. I said, somehow earlier the lecture came in and I said, do you know what, do you know, I was mentioning to everybody, do you know what is the greatest sin you can commit in Chinese culture? And I was watching them out of the corner of my eye, and immediately, boom, they were listening. Do you know what is the greatest sin you can commit in Chinese culture? Listening. And do you know what it is? What is it? Not to take care of your parents. Oh. So, so I said I said that, and boom, that was it. The whole thing changed. There, 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 there was no more sarcasm, no more. They were listening, you know. Yeah. Because these people... They know our culture, okay. They're not like stupid. So, by what I'm reading now, Carl Jung was just taking us into a, a broader perspective on Oriental philosophy, culture, how the communities are connected, you know, and how to relate to them, how to talk to them. You know. And he goes on. And at some point, he was mentioning um, uh, Vivekananda came up and Ramakrishna. So in the, fo in the, in the footnotes, Shonir Shandashini and, and the translators have excellent footnotes on different people like that. And, and uh, it was a Kumar Swami and so many people. You know, that, that, that I'm, I'm learning so much about the general ambience and the perspective. You know? I, that's the whole thing. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Shonir Shandashini knows, you know, you know, knows our philosophy and literature better than I do. That's the whole thing. I'm trying to find out how much he's actually you know, got, gotten into it and you know, what we can contribute like that. So this is kind of what we've been doing here, you know, and back to our, our PowerPoint show there. Uh, mm. So we're, we're recommending if people, if you want to join us, it just resonates with you. If you like this kind of thing, you know, and you can get in touch with us to our webpage. And of course, this is totally, you know, following in the footsteps of Bhakti Srut Dhamara Maharaj study of consciousness within science and so many things we did and Prabhupada's instructions to him. So it's very, very authorized, you know, perspective that Prabhupada wanted to develop as part of our preaching. And again, it's authorized by the super soul because the book costs $21 and it's eight cents. And uh, our, our basic, if you want to join us, here we are. <laughs> we have space, space for one more monkey. No problem. Yeah. 
And I, we're basically just adopting this Hanuma Prey shock. It's a very, very nice, iconic thing. Where is Sita Devi? Uh, give her the ring and Rama's news. Return with her jewels. So Sita oh. Devi is, is the Sita Devi is the is Bhakti Shakti in everyone's heart. Yeah, it's there. Radharani is the Bhakti Shakti in everyone's heart. Okay, where is Sita Devi? How can we touch people's hearts? The ring is Upadesha Amrita. <laughs> okay, we carry it everywhere. Mm. And uh, and then she wanted to talk about Ram and everything else after that. So we we, we deliver the Upadesha Amrita. They, they, they buy the book, you know, and then after that we discuss Krishna consciousness. Then we go back to the BBT Ramachandra with a with a full set order. <laughs> like that. Okay, here we are. We have a check the BBT for a full set of Prabhupada books. And those books are the army. Those books are the army you know, coming to uh, to fight with the evil evil Ravana and you know, all the Rakshashas. www.jairama.us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jai Rama. That's why right. That's why right. <laughs> This is yes. This is remarkable. Mm, I don't know what I'll summarize today, but I'll try to summarize if you like. Mm. It was a very wide, wide-ranging discussion. So basically, you talked about uh, and you're talking about how both Bhakti Sanskar and Carl Jung seem to be very con- contemporaneous. They the industrialization of the economy, industrialization of education, of academic education, and then industry in the Orient and the Occident, both of them, they, there are a lot of similarities in their backgrounds from which the thoughts can be evolved. And then you talked about your, when you presented to Som Sundar, how he was quite appreciative. And then you're going to have future meeting with his colleagues and mm-hmm. sannyasis when they went to do outreach, Ropa talked about new temples that can be extended to new intellectual territories also. And uh, mm-hmm. that is what you, so you found that the Kalyan community is quite a supportive community, quite appreciative community. Kalyan himself was at the Hiranyagarbha level. And uh, it's, it's uh, even devotees have found reading his books helpful for them in not only dealing with their mind, but also understanding their own spiritual growth a little bit. So mm-hmm. overall, now that the movie is going to come up, we discuss about the impact of the movies. And then you talk about subconscious, individual subconscious, the collective subconscious, which can correlate broadly with the Atma and the Paramatma at the psychological levels. And then uh, the theme, which overall is science, psyche and spirituality, which is all very, very universal theme in mm-hmm. today's world. And mm-hmm. especially, what was that quote you said? That there are certain iconographic images which we connect with. So the whole world has wept because one... Oh, yeah. One shadow, one what is this, puppet became melancholy. Was it who, who became melancholy? I, th- I think William Butler Yates, Nobel Laureate. Yeah, William Butler Yates. Yeah. That's remarkable. So, so you know, so yeah. in one sense, we are doing our preaching, but if our own outreach, but if we can connect with these iconographic images that shape people's minds and cultures, then it opens an entirely new dimension. And Prabhupada sure. said, Yeah, Bhaktivan Institute is meant for people who would not normally come to the temple, but what we do in the temple is there, done there in an appropriate way. So, and towards the end, it's it's amazing how you connected what you are doing with the mission of Hanuman taking, you know, uniting Sita with Ram. So it's beautiful, and especially this book about Carl Jung's travels wow. in India and his lectures about yoga. That's quite a quite a significant. Uh, area of intersection has been it's, it's it seems to be there for uncovering so for me it's yeah, again, little, again our, 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 like you said before is you know, we're not trying to build a bridge all we're trying to do is with, with the information perspective is it is it is it useful to the is it useful to build a bridge? Have we found? Yes. Have we found? C, have we found Sita Devi? You know? <laughs> so it's like a really long-term project, which is, which you know, we are laying the groundworks for what could be generations of work in future. So, <laughs> thank you, Maharaj, very much for sharing all this, your experiences and your, you could say, adventures, the what a diary of a traveling creature. So that will become a movie now and be quite fascinating. 
So, and so maybe, maybe maybe next time when we get together again, maybe we we'll, we can do it. Like I say, we can do it from Peru. Yes, Mara, that'll be wonderful. I look forward to that. Can we can we can take you to the deepest, darkest jungles of Peru. <laughs> but be but be careful. Be careful. You may not find your way out once you find your way out. Yet, get to our university. Oh, I mean, there are there are there are tunnels there and everything else. I mean, Ravana was keeping the gold in uh, in Brazil. Papa says that one yes. one, airport, one room conversation. <laughs> and so there are there are t- there are tunnels. There are tunnels from from Peru to Lanka. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes, Mara. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mara, okay. for your time and your association. To oh, all thank all you for yours. Thank you, Mara. And especially all the audi- audience there. And if ever Shonir Shamdashni sees this, we hope, hope we give a good presentation to the Philemon Foundation. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Mara. Humble obeisances. <laughs>